Welcome back to module 3 of object oriented uh, analysis and design. Uh, in this module earlier, we have looked at uh, three examples of uh, complex systems and tried to characterize their structure. And we have come up with some common conclusions, uh, leading with the fact that every complex system has to be hierarchic in nature. And uh, with that, we are now trying to conclude that there are five major attributes of complex systems the hierarchic structure, the relative primitive, separation of concern, common patterns and stable intermediate form. And uh, we have also taken a brief look into hierarchic structure. That is, we say that uh, every system is uh, composed of interrelated uh, subsystems and sub subsystems till you go to an elementary component level. This is a basic uh, property that uh, uh, we say will exist in any complex system that we analyze. Now, next is relative primitives that is if we keep on decomposing the system in the hierarchic manner as we have said, <coughs> then there are somewhere we will have to stop and that stopping point is called the relative primitive or the primitive. It is relative because uh, there is there cannot be a unique definition of what is a primitive. It is a matter of perception of the observer of the designer as to deciding what is a primitive and what could be a primitive for me may not be a primitive for someone else and vice versa. So, the choice of what component in a system is primitive is relatively arbitrary and is largely up to the description, but you will have to for any, any system if the description has to have some primitives in terms of which things are defined. For example, in, in personal computer electronic systems a primitive could be taken either as a digital logic gate or as a CMOS gate or you can even go lower or you can become even higher and say that no, it my primitive is not up to the level of uh, NAND gate, by, but my primitive are certain uh, electronic subsystems like MUXs and uh, resistors and I am I'm, I'm just doing a RTL kind of design. So, primitives are relatively uh, arbitrary. The next is uh, the next attribute of complex system is separation of concern. That is hierarchic systems are decomposable and that is what we have seen that they can be divided into identifiable parts. Personal computer decomposable in terms of CPU, hard disk, monitor, keyboard and so on. At the same time interestingly they are nearly decomposable in the sense that while we say that these are all decomposable, but they are not completely independent. If CPU is completely independent of the hard disk and completely independent of the monitor and so on, then the CPU will not be able to access the file from the hard disk and use it. Monitor would not be able to display the values that the CPU wants it to display. So, on one side they are decomposable, but other side they are nearly decomposable. So, this this uh, kind of can be characterized by the amount of interconnection, intercomponent linkages that exist. So, if we look into the CPU, there are different components of uh, ALU, primary memory and bus and all that. Naturally, the interconnection that exists between them or intercomponent linkages that will have to exist between them is much higher compared to what will exist between the CPU and the hard disk. So, if we look into this and try to characterize between this intra component linkage. So, if you look at this is here we are talking about the intra component that is within component and this is inter component that is across component. So, this involves uh, interconnection inter uh, actions between the internal structure and this involves interaction across components. Then we can always we will always expect that this will be much stronger there will have to be lot more within the system than what happens across the systems. This will have a much higher frequency, this will have a much lower frequency. So, uh, the difference between the intra and inter component interaction will provide a clear separation of concern. That is when I am looking into the interactions within the CPU that is highly dense and that defines what I understand to be the CPU. And when I look at the interaction between the CPU and the memory, it is low frequency, it is weak and that defines that I am talking to a separate subsystem and 
memory subsystem will have to take care of its own intra component uh, interactions, but the interaction between the CPU and the memory will be separate and can be separately handled. Now, this separation of concern is very, very important because that is what allows us to study the subsystems independently. If the separation of concern was not possible, then we would not have been able to study, design and develop the subsystems independently. So, this third attribute is very critical from our object oriented analysis design context. The third uh, that we observe is common pattern, uh, complex systems have common patterns. Uh, we did uh, mention about some of these in terms of uh, saying that uh, we have processors in personal computer, we have processors in cards, we have processors in mobile phones and so on. So, if I understand processor, then I understand all of these. So, finding out this commonality is a is one of the uh, challenge or one of the major handles through which OAD can simplify problem, because uh, a lot of exp analysis experience of people show that at the end there are not too many different kinds of subsystems uh, amongst many of the common uh, complex systems. So, if we can understand those subsystems well over a period of time, then we can approach and analyze several varieties of uh, complex uh, uh, systems quite easily. For example, the uh, from the natural world, the cells are found both in plants and animals, vessels are found both in plants and animals. So, if one understands cells, then in plants, then it is much easier for the person to go and understand cells in animals. So, common patterns are a major source of reuse. So, oh, you all would be aware with the term of reuse that uh, something which is uh, built can for one purpose can be engaged in another purpose. This reuse becomes easy, this reuse becomes possible because there are common patterns. And if I just talk about very specific examples, you have different libraries uh, in there is C, you have standard libraries in C++, you have template library, you have design patterns, you have uh, five common data structures in Python. These are all examples of common patterns that happen across domains, across systems and allow us to make reusable uh, solutions using the object and uh, object oriented analysis and design. So, this is a fourth attribute which is critical for such systems. The fifth and uh, final attribute uh, talks about stable intermediate form. It has to do more with uh, how we should tackle the development of a software system, development of a system which is complex. Uh, it is extremely difficult to design a complex system correctly in one go. I mean, if we just think that uh, we have understood, studied a lot and we can just go and design a complex system, we will inevitably uh, face failure. So, what we what succeeds is starting with a simple system and th then refine, add some more complexity and then refine again. So, this approach is typically called the iterative refinement. So, the when uh, you start, you say certain objects are very, very complex. So, you start you say okay, uh, I am I'm going to make a MATLAB kind of uh, uh, kind of system and uh, when I start, I need to represent numbers. Now, I need to represent number that representing a number itself is a very complex concept, because you need to deal with bits, the bits are finite in size, they will overflow, underflow, they need sign all that. So, you are dealing with uh, concepts, uh, objects which are just numbers and uh, you find them to be really uh, difficult to handle, they are complex in nature, while your primitive remains to be the bits that you can manipulate. Once you have built up these uh, objects, once you have built up these numbers of uh, say integer, double, uh, floating, floating point numbers, complex numbers, uh, fractional numbers and so on then you can use them to build bigger functionality. Now, you are building up matrices, now you are building up vectors, because you are doing a MATLAB. So, now the objects like a floating point number, which looked very complex and was not considered to be primitive, now in turn it will become primitive. And now you are making matrix of double numbers, floating point numbers. So, now double becomes a primitive and matrix is the next level of object, complex object that you are trying to build up. Once you have been able to build that up, then you say matrix becomes a primitive and I am making a system of uh, linear equation solver. 
where matrix is there, vector is there at every stage. So, what is primitive and what uh, is uh, complex is, is a relative term and that is what we take into advantage when we want to, when we need to build up systems and we need to go from one state of the system, one stage of the system to the next one by refinement and this is what is called a intermediate form. So, when I have started with representing number or by representing matrices or by representing systems of equation, I have not done my MATLAB, but they are all intermediate forms. But what we need is the intermediate form has to be stable by itself. That is whatever I make of a system to represent and manipulate matrices must be stable to work when I build up more systems on that. So, being able to handle stable intermediate forms or having stable intermediate forms is a necessary requirement of complex systems and any attempt to design, try to design complex systems from scratch will inevitably lead to disaster. So, these are the five uh, attributes uh, that is what we have studied. So, if to sum up, we have analyzed the structure of man made natural and social kind of administrative kind of complex system to try to understand their generic principle by elucidation. We are there is no there is no proven theory that this will happen, things will happen the way we are trying to characterize, but this is by illustration, by example that we have tried to understand that there is a lot of common properties that exist and then we have can through them, summarize them in terms of five basic attributes of a complex systems looking from the object oriented analysis and design perspective, the hierarchic structure of the system, the relative primitives separation of concerns, common patterns across different systems and across domains and the iterative refinement leading to stable intermediate forms at every stage of the system.